Hello and welcome to this week's Profit Maximizing Moment. This show is dedicated to helping business owners dramatically improve their bottom line with our weekly profit maximizing tips that you can use now. I'm your host and coach, Wayne Belisle. I'm also the founder of a local CPA firm's firm, not firms, that works with business owners to help them make more money and keep more of it from the IRS. I do that with our profit coaching programs and with our tax planning system, which has saved my clients over $6.8 million over the last five years. All legally, love my clients, but I really don't want to share a jail cell with them. In today's uh, video, we'll learn why you must always concentrate on sales, no matter how large your business gets and how much time your other duties take because we know business owners wear about 17 hats so you know no matter what you're doing it's there but first support for today's show came, comes from Profit Maximizing Publisher which published my book The 90 Day Profit Reset which shows you how to gain your independence from reduced cash flow shrinking margins and an evaporating customer base in this book you will find chapter after chapter idea after idea about how you can turn around your business and reset your profits from red to black in 90 days or fewer even entrepreneurs who are making money will benefit from my book by learning how to make more money. It's as simple as that. Everybody can get better, including myself. <laughs> Always, all right? Um, look, as business owners, we wear a ton of hats. We're, you know, we're everything. It's as simple as that. We do everything. So if you're a small owner, a small business owner like myself and like most of my clients, most of it is done in-house. Though, in today's world, you know, a lot of it is outsourced. My marketing is outsourced. Um, my bookkeep, bookkeeping clients and the bookkeeping work we do, we've outsourced. We don't do any of that internally anymore. Um, but it, it's, it, a lot of when I say our marketing is outsourced, the marketing message is outsourced. But when somebody comes in to see us, the sales process is not is not outsourced. In fact, I do it all. All right. Why? Well. I mean, let's, like I said, let's be honest. You, you've got to come up with all the strategies. You've got to come up with the ideas. You have to figure out what the inventory, make sure you have work and process handled. you got to do everything, all right? You handle finances, though you might outsource that, all right? But the one thing you probably better not do is outsource the actual sales process. Like I said, this is the number one thing that I see business owners especially think about it most business owners are not salespeople all right most business owners are technicians let's call it I, I don't mean to say that but they were like me uh, I was trained as a CPA I worked in CPA firms I got trained with my, my craft I had good training on how to prepare tax returns and financials and projections and but I got no training on how to sell Surprise, surprise, they didn't want me competing with them, I guess. All right, but that's pretty true. Most people start a business, they're good at being a plumber, a doctor, a lawyer, a dentist, uh, electrician, CPA, but they're not good at selling. As a matter of fact, most of us that aren't salespeople hate to sell. And we'll talk about that next week, too, by the way. A system that works for selling, even when you hate selling. So, one of the things, I mean, and truthfully, like I said, I can relate because I despise selling, truthfully. All right, but so that's often what happens is one of the things that you do that you get rid of all right i'm going to give you a couple of examples of how not the owner not staying involved in selling actually messes things up so like first it's a client of mine i had way back in the uh, sorry my watch decided it wanted to go off which reminds me let's turn off the phones because darn tootin it's gonna ring <laughs> there we go um had a business owner back in the 90s inherited a business from his dad. Dad was a natural born seller, or if not, he had taught himself by the time I met him. He was a very good seller. And there goes a motorcycle outside the window. Gotta love life. Anyways, um, so he was a good salesman. He passed away. Well, I don't think he passed away. I think he retired, sold the business to his son. Son, not as good a salesperson, also enjoyed the strategy and enjoyed the bookkeeping side of it, getting into the numbers. Well, what happened is that one, the people came into the store because they knew that the people there knew the product and they knew him, they knew the son, they knew the dad. The people that were employees weren't as well trained. They didn't know the products as well. They didn't understand the problems that the that the that the person, that the prospect or customer, prospective customer had. Um, so they didn't quite know how to offer a solution, right? They were just trying to make a sale. 
and truthfully even back then more so now people if you're just trying to make a sale they understand that's just not good what happened within a couple three years he, he closed the store down because sales dropped all right you, you deal with this in your everyday life walk into a store they run an ad I'll give you two more examples I walked into a, a shoe store you know and I'm trying to get somebody's attention and there, you know, there's three people up at the front all yapping to each other, but not taking care of their customers, you know, because I'm I'm an I'm an impl I'm an inconvenience to their day, all right. So they haven't been trained right. Um, kind of a shame because that company spent a lot of money on advertising and marketing to get me to come into their store, and yet their lack of training for their salespeople, because the owner wasn't involved in the training, or setting the process or monitoring it lost them a prospect and truthfully a customer I'll never go back it's treated rudely why should I um, had another person my wife my sorry my daughter went to a hair person who ran one of those Groupon coupons and got a t too many people to show up so they gave lousy service again another example of a marketing process a marketing program that worked but that the sales process didn't work all right so how how what does this mean well in truth no matter what you do at the end of the day every business is a sales business all right Dan Kennedy said this um, there's other people that have said this but at the end of the day every business is a sales business a sales and marketing business your job as the co as the owner of the company is to get customers and to keep them as long as possible to make as much money as you can from them now that sounds bad, but in truth, the only way that's going to happen is because you solve a problem that the prospect has, that the customer has. Your product or service solves a problem. And that's where things come in. Because why is the owner almost always better at selling? Well, because two things, right? One, they understand their products, and they understand what their products or services can do. Secondly, they understand the problems that the customer, the prospect, when they come into your place, has when they walk in, and they understand that. So they're able, much more able, to say, ah, oh, so this is the problem you're having. Here's your potential solutions. Here's our products that can work for it. And if we're not the right solution, a smart business person will say, you know, we're not quite the right person you should go to because you've solved their problem, which is what your job is. The more problems you sell, the better problem solving is what sells not just I have a product take it people don't go into the store to buy a phone they go into the store because they have a problem that the phone can solve and then your job is to say this product because its features advantages and benefits is better than the competitors because it solves your problem better the features and advantages that it has over its competitors and it gives you this benefit it solves your problem better than them all right so what do you need to do well first of all ensure that 20 percent of your time is spent on selling and training your staff on what your products do how they work what are their features advantages and benefits and then helping train them on recognizing your prospects problems that they solve and which of your products will best solve their problems all right so you need to train if you're not going to do all the selling yourself you need to train the people who are on the front line to do those two things. Understand the features and advantages and benefits, those three things, of every single one of your products and the type go through the ideal customer, the type of customers you have and the type of problems they're going to have so that you can train them on that. Remember to also train your staff that almost all sales opportunities are usually disguised as problems and needs of solutions. They have to uncover the problems and present the problems. So what should you do first? See what you're spending your time on. Make sure you're spending at least 20% either directly selling to your customers or training your staff. If you can't do all the customer sales, then you better handle your, remember the 80-20 rule, handle the 20% of your customers that represent 80% of your sales. And then adjust your time spent, schedule time as needed so that you don't lose those important prospects. If you don't have time, that's a different subject for a different time but if you don't have time outsource something else well outsource the bookkeeping you know I'll be careful but you can outsource that hey until next uh, first of all thanks so much for listening I really do appreciate the comments I get 
what I would ask is if you have any comments or things where this has worked for you, leave me a comment. You know, shoot me a message, shoot me an email. You can email me at wayne at wjb-cpa.com. Um, that'll work. I'll, I'll see them. Uh, but until then, I'll see you next week with another profit maximizing tip. And let's keep working on making this our most profitable year ever. Thank you very much.